Hey everybody, today Rado runs through the loop, but before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, well then, welcome to Space Time, which is under assault from the evil Dr. Fu in his little time machine right here. He is going to be traveling through seven eras, antiquities, medieval era, or the Renaissance, industrialization, the modern day, uh, the robot future, and then finally the apocalypse, zipping back and forth all over the place, trying to create rifts in time that will lead to the universe's destruction. And we have to stop him. We are time agents, and today... I'm going to be playing as the Time Prowler, and Jen is going to be the Ancient One... Oh, uh, you're literally not supposed to know how to pronounce this. Uh, Zitzwitzik, uh, Zitwitzik, I guess? Uh, it's a kind of a thinly veiled implication that this is a Cthulhu-esque uh, monster who's actually on our side. Each character has their own unique deck of cards, and this is a deck builder. As we are working cooperatively, zipping all through time and space to save the universe, we'll also be collecting cool artifacts from different time zones to uh, buff up our decks. And I've got the game already set up. We are in our starting time zones. There were a couple of zones chosen randomly that have already opened up rifts, but also opportunities. At the end of the game, we are trying to complete these two sabotage missions, surrounding Dr. Fu and patching up space time. To win, we have to complete four total sabotage missions before time runs out. But that's if we're playing the standard sabotage mode. The game actually comes with four different game modes. Sabotage, which is basically what I've set up. There's a couple of artifacts out here. We're ready to go. Um, or we could upgrade to the Cyan Super Duplicates or the Laser Centrifuges, which introduce time lasers that we have to deal with, or Super Clones, or we can go for the most elaborate, the most complex one, the Ultra Machina, which is how I'm going to play today. So that means there's a few other changes to the uh, rules to, uh, to get going. One is Dr. Fu has a deck of seven cards. It gets drawn from randomly. And every turn, he's going to draw a card and that's going to say, oh, he's going to go to the era of robots and attack. And then after that, he would go to the Year of Antiquities and attack. And then he'd go to the Year of Globalization and attack, and so on. We're not using this deck. Instead, we are giving him the Super Souped Up deck. And, as part of setup, these are going to create, effectively, evil plots all throughout time. And we're playing medium difficulty, so we have to draw one, two, three, four, five of these. All right, and so, we've got fossil fuels in the Year of Antiquities. We've got... Uh, hyper productivity in, in the industrialization, non renewable energy in the globalization, uh, mini blackout in the robot zone, and uh, wow, okay, one in uh, what is it? Uh, pr uh, prim automaton or prime automaton, prime automaton in uh, right. So these are extra bad things that will happen when he gets to those particular zones. We would not normally have these if we were playing in the regular game. He would just go to a zone, he'd create some rifts, and then we get to play. But because we're playing in the Ultra Machina stage, uh, things are going to work a little bit differently. And also, to make up for the fact that we have this extra level of uh, challenge we have to deal with, because he's got all these additional plots, we do get a bonus. We get to, in a two-player game, draw three time artifacts, and each of us is going to get to add one to our deck. It's like we've already gotten a little bit of a win. So, what have we got here? The Torch of Prometheus, Gutenberg's Wormhole, and... The Bat of Final Judgment. So, both Jen and I get one of these, and the other... <coughs> All right, the other one's out of the game. And choosing who gets what goes into the issues of deck building in this deck builder. Because each of these cards, well, they have a time zone they would normally appear in. Uh, you know, the Apocalypse, the Renaissance, the Year of Antiquities. And they have a special power you can use when you play them. But they also have a dimension to them as well. This card is attuned to the, uh, the flat dimension, the spiral dimension. And this one's not a tuned dimension. It's a, got a black hole. And strictly speaking, while we're deck building, we want to try to get more cards of a given dimension into our deck. So, if we look at the Time Prowler, her starting deck 
has uh, two flat dimension cards, one spiral, and two stars. So really, spiral is is not as good for her. If you can, you want to, when deck building, specialize in a given dimension. So uh, because of that, I think she'll go on ahead and take uh, this what do you call it, the uh, Gutenberg's Wormhole, and this will go into her deck. So she's getting a little bit of an extra boost right from the get-go. And so, uh, uh, Sitzwazik has to get one of these other two, and Sitzwazik is really happy with Spiral, so we could give him a Spiral, or it a Spiral. The Black Holes, they are not attuned to any dimension, so they don't really help you loop, which will make sense in a bit, but they're generally more powerful. So am I going to give him a more powerful card, uh, which is when he plays this, draw a card, and then add an energy to uh, the era of that card. That's nice. Or um, this one, which could be looped, because it's, part of the, it's attuned to the Spiral dimension. Put a clone on your era, um, or, or take a clone that's wherever you are, whatever era you're in, move it to Dr. Fu's era, and then remove one um, rift from Dr. Fu's era. So that's cool too, but that's much more situational. It's going to be trickier to use because when that card's in your hand, Dr. Fu might not be in an era where it makes sense to do this. So even though I could put this in here, which would make Zitzwick stronger with spirals, which is a good thing, I think this is out of the game. Goodbye, Bat of Final Judgment. He'll take the Black Hole because this is just a really strong, universally powerful card. Okay, so into the deck it goes. All right, and now we are ready to save space time from Dr. Fu. And how does it work? Well, a uh, player's turn is really straightforward. First, Fu does some stuff. Then um, we get to do actions based on the cards we've got in hand. Then um, we have the potential to get another artifact if we end our turn in an era where there's an artifact. So right now, we would like to end our turns in the... Um, the Medieval Age or the Apocalypse Age, so we can pick up Time Nato or Merlin's Elixir. And then finally, the last thing on the turn is we can sabotage, we, we can um, you know do sabotage effects if we end in the region where there's a face-up sabotage tile and we have completed it. To surround Dr. Fu, uh, the, the player um, and another agent, uh, pl or let's see, you and another agent are on two eras adjacent to Dr. Fu. Okay, so to work on this, we have to three times over the course of the game, and we can only do this once per player's turn, we have to surround Dr. Fu. Dr. Fu is currently in the Age of Apocalypse. And um, so this looks over here. If the Time Prowler were over here in the Robot Age, we would get to put progress on surrounding Dr. Fu. Once we've done that three times... If either of us ends our turn in the Renaissance era, we will complete this objective. And remember, we have to complete four objectives to win. Sp patching up space-time is we have to remove rifts in time, um, uh, one from each of the seven eras. So Dr. Fu has to open those rifts, and then we have to repair them. Once we have done it once in each of the seven eras, we'll complete this. And now every time you complete one of these, you reveal another one. So there's always two objectives on the go. Although the objectives can get destroyed if we don't stay on top of things. So this is what we're trying to do while also trying to stop uh, Dr. Fu. And let's get to it. We begin with the Fu phase, where Dr. Fu generates another duplicate or clone of himself, and another artifact appears somewhere. So we got to go to the clone bag. Here's Dr. Fu, and we'll find out where this new one. As part of said, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven clones were already placed in random time zones. We got a couple of clones over here in the Apocalypse, a couple of clones over here in the era of industrialization, no clones in Antiquities, but two, let's uh, see, one more is going to appear because we are in the first phase. Later on, uh, Dr. Fu will get tougher and start producing two clones per turn, and then ultimately even three clones per turn. But things are going slow right now. The new clone appears in the um, industrial area, and this clone, for us to defeat this clone, we have to push it into the um, era of globalization. So it starts out here, and if we can ever push it over here, it will get destroyed. And that's a big part of what we're doing. We're trying to repair these rifts, we're trying to destroy these clones, and we're trying to complete these objectives. That's what we need to be focusing on. And uh, as it also says here, a new artifact appears, and it's going to be the 56K modem, which uh, goes into the modern day right over there. So if we, now we have three places where if we end our turn, we will get um, more stuff. Okay, next up. 
Dr. Fu would read his top Fu card and then drop cubes. And now what that means in the normal gameplay is Dr. Fu would draw the top card from his deck. It would be the Ear of Robots. He would transport himself in time to the Ear of Robots, and then he would drop red cubes and they would spread into all the adjoining areas to create more rifts in time. Now that's how it works normally, and you go through his deck, there's seven cards, one for each zone. We're playing the more advanced version of the game, where he is not quite so unpredictable. In the Ultra Machina, he is just going to always move clockwise, one to the right, so we always know where he's going to be, and wherever he ends up, which is this center shoot on his little time machine, again, you can see the little picture of him right there, he will activate any of his plot cards. So, he is going to um, get to push fossil fuels. Add one one more rift into the industrial era. Oh no! So um, every time he visits here, these fossil fuels that you know he sets up this plot in the past will um, start to hurt us in the industrial era. Okay, so um, like I said, normally he just draws a card, rotates and drop cubes, but here he just rotates once, activates whatever he sees, whatever of his plot cards are, and then he's still going to drop cubes. And the way that works is he always drops one rift. Or, I'm sorry, um, two rifts. He always drops at least two rifts plus one additional rift for every clone in that time period. There are no clones here, so he's just going to drop two. Next round, he's going to be over here. And if we don't do something about it, he's going to drop one, two, three, four and create more rifts in time. And the problem is, if a given time zone ever gets to four rifts, it um, basically opens up a, a vortex that will destroy our progress it'll, uh, and just cause all kinds of mayhem. So we that's why we need to get rid of these clones because whenever he visits those clones, he opens more rifts in space-time. But right now, there were no clones here, so he's just going to do the two. And we drop them in, boop, boop, and they both showed up here in the Year of Antiquities. So the Year of Antiquities is now the biggest danger in the game. It's about to blow. If it gets two more, then this objective, whatever it is, we will lose the opportunity to do it. This will stay here. If there were any artifacts, they would go away. And um, it would just be very, very bad. So we need to clear these up. Now, um, this is a little cube tower, so randomly they came up here, but they might have split up. That's the thing. You, even if you know where Dr. Fu is going to be, you never know exactly where he's going to strike because of his little, uh, you know, Fu tower. All right. So anyway, he is done, and you do this at the beginning of every turn. Now we move on to our actions. And you know what? I'm just going to move our player cards off to the side so that I can have a little bit more room to show one, two, three. So this is my hand of three cards. Hey, I've got my uh, wormhole. Actually, let's even leave these off to the side because we're probably going to need a little bit more room as more artifacts and whatnot appear. Jen, her hand of her opening hand of three cards is super underwear. The torture Prometheus. Hey, we both got our specials. Okay, so that is that. And uh, it is important to remember that um, w during our turn, we can play one, two, or um, all three of our cards. And that's the main thing that we're going to do. We're going to be using these cards to activate these abilities, to travel through time, and fight all these problems. We also, each of us, have the ability once to move an era for free. And once we do that, we flip this over to indicate our personal batteries are dead so we can't do it again. Also, each of us has a special power. The Time Prowler, that's who I am. My special power is... Oh, shoot! I totally forgot. The Time Prowler is during the Foo phase. After dropping the cubes, cancel one of them. Um, right, so only one of these came out. Because she's a no-nonsense, Matthew Broderick-esque hacker from the 80s who has hacked the machine so less time rifts show up. All right, so... Uh, Zitzwick's ability is when he uses his free move, he can move as far as he wants. So uh, he can travel the highways and byways of space-time better than anybody. So we've got our special powers, we've got our regular abilities, and we are off to the races. Because during my turn, I can move once for free, um, and then if I want to move additionally, I have to spend energy. I can tap my cards to use their abilities, and I can do a loop. And the, that's the name of the game, and looping is incredibly powerful. As long as you don't have a lot of black hole cards in your hand. So, we we'll, might see how that works. And so, here I am, way over here, a long ways away from all the action in the, uh, in the present day, instead of over here in the past. I would like to clear out some rifts. I would like to clear out some of these, So because right now, next round... 
four rifts are going to appear at this epicenter, so they could spread all over the place, and we might lose um, our first. You know, we, and also, remember, I want to end my turn either here to get the 56k modem, here to get the time NATO, or here to get Merlin's elixir. So, what am I going to do with my three cards? Well, let's take a closer look at them because I can play these three. Oh dear, that's not very green screen friendly. Let's go on ahead and uh, just turn the green screen off for a second. Um, and I am going to use these three cards to be as effective as I can. So all three of these are about getting rid of rifts in time. Although this one is actually about generating more energy. I don't have any ability for this round to be able to get rid of any clones, which is a different uh, symbol and text. So that's what I've got to play with. Let's turn the green screen back off. And um, what am I going to do? So, well, one thing is, right now, where I am here in the present is not a good time to use the Quantum Rich because it says, remove a rift um, from one of the next two eras. In present day, the next two eras are the Age of Robots and the Apocalypse. There are no rifts here. So, this card does me no good right now. So, to, okay, for starters, Let's go on ahead and use my innate ability to move once for free. Everybody can do that once per turn. And when you move, you can go clockwise or counterclockwise into the future or into the past. I'll come over here into the past, so I'm getting closer to where all these clones are. All right. So, that was my one free move, and from now on, it's all cards. I will now use my Quantum Wrench to remove a rift from one of the next two eras. Where I just was, I'll get rid of that rift. Woot! And that's nice. This is the first time we've removed an era from the era of globalization. So I'll mark it here. We are one step closer to patching up space-time. So I've used that card. Now, um, so my bag of tricks would let me add an energy onto the previous era. And you'll notice there is no energy lying around. As part of setup, there were two rifts and five bits of energy already preceded on the board. There's no energy here, which makes it harder to be able to deal with the Renaissance era. So how about I use my bag of tricks to add energy to that time frame? Okay, and now I've got my wormhole, which says remove a rift from the current era and one from a vortex. So I've just removed this one, and hey... We've gotten another one. We, we only need five more rifts in specific time zones. And also, one from a vortex. Now, unfortunately, War G Gutenberg's wormhole is going to be more useful later once we have started having vortexes open up. Remember, that's once four rifts appear in an area and we're starting to lose ground. Gutenberg's wormhole lets you um, remove rifts from those particular areas because these are the most dangerous. Once four have appeared here, then those rifts clear out, a vortex opens up, and then if four more rifts appear, where there's a vortex, the universe is destroyed and we lose. So this is a good safety net once um, Dr. Fu really starts wearing us down. But right now, it's a little bit less powerful. Now you might say, hey, my turn is over. I've used my one ability. I've used my three cards. I'm all exhausted. That's where looping comes in. The first time on a turn that I loop, I, it costs me one energy. If I want to loop a second time, it costs me two. If I want to loop a third time, it costs me three. That's very expensive. So what I can do is I can spend one energy right now to loop. And what that means is these all untap because they're all the same dimension. When I loop, I pick a dimension to loop and I untap all of those cards. So that's why it's good. That's why this is a great turn because, hey, I can untap all three of these. But it means I will consume the energy that is on this zone. And I kind of need that energy because if I loop right now, then I could play all these again and they say, hey, remove another rift. There aren't any, so the wrench won't do any good. Remove one from my current era. There aren't any. So I am not going to loop yet. Instead, I'm going to consume the energy that's in the era of industrialization to, uh, to move. You can either spend the energy to move or loop. I'm spending it to move. And I'm coming over here. Now I'm in the Renaissance era. I could now consume this to untap all of these, but it's still not a great time because I won't be able to use the wrench. So I'm going to consume this energy and move again. And now I'm in the Middle Ages. And I could consume this to move over here, but I think now... Is this a good time? Yeah, I think this is a good spot. Now I will consume this not to move again, but instead to loop 
Boop, boop, boop. I've got all three of my cards back. I can start doing them again. Quantum Ridge. Remove a rift from one of the next two eras. Hey, boom. We've just cleaned up the Renaissance. Nice. A bag of tricks. Add energy to the previous era. And uh, Jen is happy about that because now she's got two energy to play with where she's starting out. And Gutenberg's Wormhole. Remove one from my current era. And now, uh, that's kind of a bummer because there's nothing here. If I hadn't looped here, but if I had consumed that energy to come over here, then I could have used this as well, and I would have gotten rid of one more. Urgh. But on the other hand, it is nice to give Jen access to two energy, potentially. I'll live with it, which means basically, yes, uh, there isn't something here. There's no vortexes, so that was actually kind of dumb. I should have consumed energy, come over here, and then done all those actions. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm going to have done. All right, so I didn't consume this energy. Uh, I didn't add energy to the previous one. I mean, th these uh, these turns, even though the Time Prowler and Zitwick are the two simplest characters in the game, their powers and their cards are, are pretty straightforward. The other three characters that come with the game, Vortex Girl, Mr. Time, and the Robo Finisher 404, these all get progressively harder and more complex to use, and they've got decks of cards with really interesting powers. Right now, uh, it's interesting, I'm playing the most complex module, but um, with the two most straightforward characters. And anyway, though, so, I am... Right, so I didn't remove one from the next two years, so the Renaissance is still hurting. I'm going to have consumed this to have gone one more space. Then I consumed this to loop so I could get my cards back. Then I removed one, um, which was uh, going to be over here in the Renaissance. Fine. And then I'm going to add one into the into the, the future, really. Our past is currently the future because the whole game board is a loop. So now there's two energy, and I can remove one from the current era. So we've just cleared out antiquities as well. So that was a very... I, I have cleared all the rifts off the board with a well-timed loop, and that was because I got to use my cards twice because I was doing deck building that played to one of my strengths. Okay, so that was pretty good. Although, I didn't take out any clones at all. So that's a little scary. But anyway, I am done with my action. I, if, if there was more energy, if now if there were two energy here, I could spend them again to get all the cards back and go again. But uh, that is not going to happen. We are now going to uh, move on to uh, getting a card. And here's a bummer. If I had ended my turn here, if I'd stuck with my original plan, I could have added Merlin's Elixir to my deck. But I ended here, where there are no artifacts to pick up. So, I won't get any artifacts. Uh, there's no sabotage tiles where I am, so I'm not going to do that. And now at the end of the turn, I discard my hand, and uh, get my batteries recharged. I refill up to three, and then check the foo draw pile. Alright, so, these cards are discarded. I get three more. One two, three. They are all upside down. And I recharge my batteries. And if this deck was empty now, we would move on to the next phase and um, Dr. Fu would start drawing two clones per turn instead of one. Oh, I should say, that's if we were using the regular Dr. Fu deck. This works, uh, it works a little bit differently in the Ultra Machina, which uh, as time goes on, we'll replay. So yeah, that was still a pretty good turn. My only bummer is I didn't get to pick up an artifact along the way. But hey, that just means I've left artifacts on the table for my teammate. It is now Jen's turn. Uh, fire up the uh, Sitzlik. And so first of all, Fu is going to create another clone. And another artifact is going to appear. The Feather of uh, Quetzalcoatl appears in the Era of Antiquity. Now it appears, uh, unfortunately. And a new clone shows up somewhere. And let's see, it's in the Era of Robots. And this one wants to be pushed next door into the Year of Apocalypse. You can see there's a little Apocalypse thing. If this gets pushed in the Apocalypse, it gets destroyed. Which we need to be doing, because the more these clones build up, the worse it gets. And now remember, normally, we would draw another Dr. Fu card, and it would say, Hey, he goes to the Year of Industry, and starts creating time rifts. But in this more complex one, we know exactly where he's going to go. And now he's going to produce two, three, four rifts. And it's a good thing I cleared out all of those rifts that are in here because we could have had our first vortex appear, which would not be good. Um, now, it could still happen. I mean, three of these could fall down one shoot, but that's fairly unlikely. Let's see how Dr. Fu hits us. All right, boom. A double hit over here and a double hit over here. So now we've got two zones on the edge, and um, Jen is up. 
She's got three abilities herself. Let's not do that green screen again. Let's just zoom in on them. You can read them just fine. Okay, she's got her super underwear. She's got the Torch of Prometheus. And she's got the neurotemporal, uh, the neurotemporal connectors. Before we do anything, let's go ahead and use this Sword of Prometheus first. It's a black hole, which means it can't be looped. It can only be used once, which means it's super powerful. And it is. This is that bonus card I got. Draw one card, add an energy to that card's original era, and then you've got that new card. So, uh, this what gets to go through his deck a little bit faster. Draw one more card. We'll say it's uh, this one. And what do you got? He got the Auto Disguise Headband. And this is Medieval Era, so we get to put an energy, right? Add an energy to the Medieval, which is good. There wasn't any there. And then, this is now in the hand. And so suddenly, oh, look at this. When we loop, we've got two cards that we can use. Nice! Strictly speaking, this is still in our hand, but we can't use it for loops anymore, so I'm just going to cover it up to forget about it. So, that was cool. We have a little bit more energy to play with. And um, now, and we've got one more, uh, which is add energy to Dr. Fu's era. Now, Dr. Fu is currently in the medieval era too. So we could put another energy there, which means we could actually do a second loop in this. Our first loop would cost one energy. Our second loop would cost two. So the more we can build energy up in an area without spending it to move around, the more powerful we become. So anyway, what else can we do? The uh, super underwear, remove a rift from your current era. There aren't any, so we're going to have to get out of here before we do that. And the temporal connectors, add an energy to your era, then move one era. So that's pretty cool. Hey, and you know what? There is no energy here. Time Prowler is going to need some energy. So let's go on ahead and do the connectors. Put one here and now move. And again, we could go into the future or into the past, which at this point happens to be the future. And let's go on ahead and move over here. All right, so we've got that. Now, we can add another energy here. We can remove uh, one from... Let's go on ahead and remove one. And that means we have now done another one. We patched up... We're close. Now, now unfortunately, there are no rifts in the future yet. Oh, and that's a problem. In the regular game, Dr. Fu's jumping all over the time stream. So it wouldn't be too long before he starts putting some rifts here. But he's not... I mean, in this mode, he's going to very slowly... This would be the first time. So these last two steps, we're not going to be able to get to for a while because of how he's very systematically going around. All right, okay. So we're going to have to put that on hold, which means... And I totally forgot about our other objectives surrounding him. How were we before? Oh, we ended up in the same place. We need to end up... Um, you know, Jen needs to end up over here in the Renaissance because I'm in the right place to surround him and get one of... So, we know this round, Jen wants to end her turn over here. Although ending her turn over here means, again, she won't get any artifacts. Arg. Alrighty. So, but anyway. So, she just used her underwear. She got rid of her rift there. Great. And um, now, she can do this... Uh, she can add one energy here. She might as well, because Dr. Fu's not going to move. Alright, there we go. And now, I think she will loop. Although, here's the deal. She hasn't even moved yet. Remember, we get one free move. And her special abilities, when she does her free move, she can go anywhere. So that is super duper powerful. Super duper powerful indeed. But let's go ahead and keep it simple. We'll just spend the one. And with loop, it's either the flat dimension or the two spirals. I think obviously we'll get the two spirals back. And now we can use these again. Um, which is add another energy. So now there's two energy here, so we could loop a second time. And it is remove one from your era. So there's only one more here. But honestly, this is the bigger danger where there's two. So um, I think uh, we'll have done that. So that's fine. Um, and before we do this, we'll use our ability to move for free. And remember, this one could move anywhere anywhere, but we're just going to move over here anyway because we want to surround Dr. Fu. So move there. Now, using the super underwear, remove one from here. And we've already done Renaissance, so that doesn't go towards our progress. And now, all our cards are done. We've used our free move, so we're done unless we could loop again. There would need to be two energy here to be able to loop again. There's not. So, um, uh, Zitwick, Zitwick is done. And, uh, yeah. That's pretty nice. The end of the turn, um, are, is she... In a region where there's a artifact? Sadly, no. We still haven't picked any of these up. But checking the uh, status, we can see Dr. Fu is surrounded. So we have made one progress on um, the, uh, what do you call it? 
the uh, surrounding Doctor Fu. Oh, also, oh my gosh, I totally forgot. Uh, folks, this is why you watch with the Klingon subtitles turned on. Paulo already pointed out, I'm sure, that I've got a very important element of the Ultra Machina. We can destroy these plans of Dr. Fu. What happens is, when you put energy in a zone where one of his evil plots are, we can put damage on them to uh, slowly get rid of them. And, as I recall, on my turn, I believe I did when I was here, I put energy in the past, so I put one here. So that meant we had one of the two phases of this already destroyed. And then I continued on, and I... Ended, oh, when I was here, I put energy here, so I didn't put one there. So, okay, so I forgot to do that. But now, here's the interesting thing. I just used... Um, oh, yeah, yeah. So, move one from the era. Right, and, so, and I just moved... Ah! Right, right, right. Okay, so I would like to put another one here. And so, currently... I had used this right at the get-go to, to, to give uh, the gold time prowler some energy. If I hadn't used this at the beginning, which, by the way, when I put this here, I should have put a damage on that as well. If I hadn't used this, if I had you know, moved, used these over here, and then looped, and then moved over here, and, um, and then used it to clear out, but then I finally put energy on this, then that means boom. We have destroyed the, uh, the, 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 the Prime Automon before it ever got a chance to fire off. And the nice thing is, as a reward for destroying these, and these are removed from the game, a little bit of energy is released, but we don't know where it's going to go. Bloop! It pro oh, hey! I ended up getting that energy left over anyway. Nice. Okay. You know what? Actually, it occurs to me. Let's go on ahead and just scooch this whole thing up a little bit. I don't know why I have it down like this, so you can't see the uh, fossil fuels. There we go. There's room. There's room. Just a little. There we go. Okay, so that was a much more effective, you know, wait until the end of my turn to do this so I could have destroyed that. Okay, and so my turn is over. I'm going to discard all of this business. Unfortunately, um, there is nothing here, but we did surround Dr. Fu, like I already talked about, and um, then we get a new hand for Tsitswick, which is 1-2, and then, hey, she's already gone through her deck once. She's going to reshuffle, and boom. Got the connectors again. And she is done. And it is back to me. Back to my turn. So, Foo Face. We uh, put another clone. We are not getting these clones under control at all. Uh, so, this one goes into the Robot Age. And this one's a bit tougher. You've seen the ones that have come out so far. They just need to kind of be pushed like one zone. This one that starts in the Robot Age needs to be pushed twice over into the Era of Antiquities to defeat it. So that could be a bit of a problem. And then a new artifact appears, and we've yet to pick up any. The Research Dog, probably Jen's favorite. This goes into the modern day. So there are now two different artifacts we could pick up there. All right, and now remember, uh, Fu is just going to move on to the next one. And he says, hey, where's my evil plot? It's gone, buddy. Well, he says, okay, well, rift time. One, two, three, four rifts. Which, again means we could have a Vortex explode here if three of the four rifts fall down, because there's already one there. Let's see what happens. Okay. Um, right, we are on the edge right there, and this one comes over there. Sweet. Okay. And uh, that's that. And uh, unfortunately, we are not going to be able to surround Dr. Fu this turn because, well... If somebody were playing as Mr. Time, his thing is he can really activate other players' actions and do a lot of, like, kind of time administration. And so he might be able to get Jen to move over here so he could go over here. So, But as it is, um, one, you know, I'm going to want to end my turn here so that Jen could end her turn over here. No, no, because next turn, I'm going to want to end my turn here. And so when Dr. Fu's here, right, so you can see we're starting to do some long-term planning, trying to stay ahead of him so we can keep surrounding him. Um, and eventually when he gets all the way over here and he starts putting rifts, when we clear those up, we can do patching up the space-time as well. Um, but, if I, again, if I end my turn here, that's more vortex, or more artifacts I'm giving up. And, I mean, and I mean, these can blow up. If, if, uh, you know, say four rifts appear here and this becomes a vortex, the, you know, um, Quetzalcoatl's feather will disappear. So we really should be picking some more of these up. But we should also be trying to surround Dr. Fu, because that's how we actually win. But if we get more powerful cards, that will help in the long run. Hmm. All righty. So, anyway, though, what's going on today for my second turn? I've got the Prowler's Coat, the Brawler's Gloves, and the Quantum Bandage. And first of all, before we get to that, I forgot. 
my special power, one of the cubes that gets dropped on my turn goes away. And I think, obviously, that should be one of these because uh, we don't want to be right on the edge. So that was good. So these are pretty straightforward. Um, well, that, first of all, there's nothing really going on here. Uh, no, no rifts, no clones. There is one energy, which I, you know, I could save my free move for later, and I could consume this energy right now to move. Let's go on ahead and do that. I'm going to eat this energy to move, and we're going to come over here. And there's a lot of trouble. Let's go on ahead and use the Brawler's Gloves. Push a clone um, that is in my era. So I can push either of these. Let's go on ahead and push this guy into the Antico Where he says, no, that's not where I want to be. And boom, he's gone. So I've t finally taken out a clone. A little late, because that clone's already been able to do the damage. I should be moving on over here to be pushing... Um, no, well, I mean, well, these clones are gone. I should be coming over here because these clones are in the future. These clones are not really going to bother us for a long time. So hold on a second. Do I want to do that? There you are. Because I could have gone the other way and pushed this one over here and this one because these are ones in the future. These are clones that aren't going to bother us. So I come over here and brawl and then eventually eat one of these to get this back so I can push the other one over here and take out both of those. That's maybe, maybe, uh, maybe I don't need to be thinking about these because these have already done their damage and it won't be until um, Dr. Fu comes all the way back around that we have to worry about them again. And remember, in the regular game, Dr. Fu is moving a lot more. He's a lot more unpredictable because he's just burning through this deck really quick. But, hmm, maybe I should go that way instead. But then what am I going to do? What's my other stuff? Remove a Rift. There are no Rifts here. So being over here isn't going to let me do anything with my Bandage. And then move one era or remove a Rift. And again, there's no... So if I come over here to take these out because they're the bigger danger, then I am not using either of my other cards very well. Hmm... Urgh. Okay, I... Th mm. But that's the other thing, too. These rifts, they're going to sit here for a while. It's not going to... You know, because, again, he's moving away. Because we, he has these... I mean, so this this is totally good for the future, but a long ways in the future, as opposed to these things that are more clear and present danger. It's just that there's no rifts over here. These are where the rifts are. So I'm playing catch-up with this guy. Urgh. All right, I think I do care more about this. Let's go on ahead and move over here. Right, so I spent my energy, I moved over there. Now we will brawl, and I'll push uh, Mr. Afraid of Robots into Robot Town, and boom. Bye bye Okay, then... Let's see, and now interestingly, if I loop, I am only going to be able to reset this one or this one. Let's go on ahead and eat one of these energy that's here right now, and loop right now, so I can use this again, and uh, push other guy, boom, you're also gone. Toast. Alrighty, now, my other two cards are about rifts. I don't have any rifts available to me right now. So, let's move once for free, which I get to do. And then let's use my Prowler's Coat to move one more era. And now I have arrived and remove a Rift. So, I'm very happy with that. I think that was definitely the better way to go. And then let's go on ahead and Quantum Bandage and get rid of this last Rift. Okay. And uh, now I am done. Although I'm not, there's two energy here. If I wanted, I could now spend two energy to um, get the Prowler's Coat back. No, no, but I can't. Because the most powerful things are black holes. They can't be untapped. So I could do this so that I could push one of these away. Do I want to spend these two to get rid of them? No, I think we're going to want that energy later. So I am not going to do a second loop, even though I could afford to do it and get rid of one of these clones. I think I'm going to stop right there. And now the problem is, of course... I'm not stopping over here, which means if I'm not over here so the gen could be over there, then we will not be able to, um, oh, what do you call it? Uh, can't think of the word. Uh, surround Dr. Fu. But on the other hand, I will get Merlin's Elixir. And I do want to build my deck up a little bit more. So I think I'm going to go for that. So I am done. Alrighty, and since I ended my turn here, uh, this goes on to the top of my draw pile. I will have it next turn. Alrighty, and um, all right, so I, I got that. There, I'm not sabotaging anything because I'm not ending in an active sabotage area. We not that we finished either of these yet, and it's the end of my turn. So bye bye to these cards. They go to my discard pile, and then say hello to my little elixir and my digital watch. And I've now gone through my deck, so I'm, I'm reshuffling. I'm starting over. And I've got my Prowler's Code again. Alrighty, so a loop is only going to let me use my digital watch twice, which is add an energy onto the next era. Which could be good, because remember, adding energy is how we can get rid of his evil plots. Alright, so that was it for me. 
Time will tell if that was the right choice, but it is now Jen's turn. And first of all, Dr. Fu says, hi, time for another clone. And this one uh, starts in the medieval era. Wow, there's three of them here now. Oh, I'm sorry, no. Starts in antiquities and wants to get pushed over there. Okay. Then a new artifact shows up. It's the hoverboard on wheels, which is in the robot era, as you might imagine. Um, very back to the future -y. Oh, I should have my move back again for next turn. And now Dr. Fu moves on and... He, it is now a time of hyper-productivity. Players destroy a total of two cards from their hands, add a rift onto the original era of these cards. Players then draw to... Oh my gosh. Wow. I really should have looked at that ahead of time. There's no voting. I mean, if, if, if we, could, we could have, instead of everything else we're doing, we could have focused all our, you know, get rid of this before it happened. We now have to destroy one of our cards. Wow. Well, I'm not destroying this elixir I just got. So am I going to destroy my watch, add an energy to the next era, or my coat, move an era, and then remove a rift? Oh, man. So normally, I, this would be the one. I mean, one energy as opposed to a move and a rift. This is a more powerful card, which you can tell because it's the black hole. But in this case, this is the more powerful one because we need to be putting energy to destroy these plans. Once he goes all the way around the board, he's going to put three more of them out onto the board. So we do need to be destroying these things. So I think I'm going to say, oh, sayonara to my Prowler's coat. But I do, as it says, I do get to draw one. So I bring back on my Brawler's gloves. Jen, she's got to destroy one of these as well. Oh, my goodness gracious. Um, oh, whoops. Oh, and hold on a second. I forgot. So this came from the Year of Antiquities, which means... Oh, 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 wait a second. Hold on, then. This is actually... Maybe this is an opportunity. Uh, right, I just destroyed the Prowler's Cult. No, no, okay. It, actually, in my case, it doesn't really matter. So, but the Prowler's Cult I destroyed, which meant a rift appeared in Antiquities, and then I drew a card. And now we've got Jen's. And here's the deal. If Jen destroys her uh, connectors or her quadriferal vision... A rift will appear in the zones we need it to appear so that we can finish patching up space-time. Ooh. All right, then. Well, that means Jen wants to get rid of one of these. Um, this is the one. Add one energy to your era and then move. That's very cool. Or add one energy onto adjacent. I think we say goodbye to uh, the quadriferal vision. And that means a rift appears over here. And now we want to get rid of this rift so we're closer to finishing that. And so that's gone. And then Jen draws another card to replace it. Her super underwear is back. Okay. So... Ouch, that hurt. That would be a good thing to destroy. Although, again, it's only going to go... It's happened once every go-around as uh, Dr. Fu just keeps on hitting us. So that was it. And now, Jen is up. And, uh, I, you know, where is she going to want it? I, it'd be nice to end over here to get the Research Dog or the 56K modem. Uh, the sooner we, uh, you know, if, if she ends over here, she can pick up the Time NATO and get the Rift. Because next turn, there's a chance... When Dr. Fu is over here, that he might drop a rift over here, which means we could do this, and then we could get this thing done that much quicker. So that's a possibility. So if Jen wants to enter over here and complete this, and we forget about surrounding him for a while. We've done one. We can work on that more later. What is Jen going to do with her three cards? Well, okay, one thing is Jen's got her zapper which lets her swap positions with a... Um, which is a great way to move around, but it's also a great way to get rid of an agent. And remember, not all agents or clones or duplicates are created equal. Some of them you have to move farther. This one, you only have to move one space. This one, you have to move two spaces. And this one, um, these are both easier to get. This is a tougher one. It's got to move two spaces. So, it'd be good to use this zapper to take care of one of those ones that has to be pushed further. And remember, Jen's got her special power to go wherever she wants. So I think she will use her move once to go wherever and come back to Antiquities, right? Then she'll use her zapper to swap positions um, with a clone. Oh, it has to be an adjacent clone. Drat, I didn't read the fine print. So, I mean, this can only be used for ones that only need to move one space. Drat, drat, drat. Because what I was going to do was move over here and then swap with this. And then, oops, and then fall over. And then, boom, he was taken out. But they have to be adjacent. So that's not quite what I was thinking then. Well, okay. So then, well, so we get we're adjacent. Let's use the power to move over here and then use the zapper to swap positions. And then, boom, this one's taken out because this is one that was about to hit us because Dr. Fu was almost there. 
All right, and now we're in a nomad. Although if Jin Ninja turns here, she can get a nice what's it. It would be good to drop some energy here to start working on this non-renewable energy. Because uh, we don't want non-renewable energy. Oh, that evil Dr. Fu. So what else can we do? All right, tell you what. Let's do some neural temporal connectors. Add an energy here, which does start putting damage on the non-renewable energy. Nice. And then move one era. So now we're back over here. And then let's go on ahead and consume this, because we've already used our free move, to move again. And now we're where we ultimately want to be. And then let's use the super underwear to get one step closer to completing an objective. Nice! And now, there's one more here. So I could consume this to either move, but I want to stay here, or loop to get back the connectors or the underwear. But the underwear doesn't need to go again. There's not another. Um, add one. and So this would let me add another energy and then move. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, let's go on ahead and consume this to loop. Get our neurotemporal connectors back, which says, hey, put an energy back here. So basically, this was free. And then move over here. And boom, we're end up because we need, we'll get the hoverboard on wheels. And we'll be in position to surround Dr. Fu next time. Perfect. Well done. Whatever your name is. Okay, so we are done. Those get discarded. Nice. We do end our turn with the hoverboard on wheels. It goes to the top of our draw pile. And um, yeah, so we refill a hand. There's the hoverboard and the torch of Prometheus and the auto headband disguise. And uh, that is it, right? Yeah, no missions completed, etc., etc. Dr. Fu moves on. He's going to do some other nasty thing now. And uh, first of all, another clone comes out. And it's in the Ear of Apocalypse. And he, oh, this is a tough one. He's got to move one, two, three to get this one all the way over here. Yikes. So he's going to be pestering us. He's going to be a thorn on our side for a while. And we get another artifact. And it is a strawberry donut. Um, let's see. Of course, that would be something that uh, comes from our time, not the future or the past. So there's a lot of artifacts to pick up over here. And um, now Dr. Fu says, hi, I'd like to drop two plus nothing. There's no agents there. And, although, wait. All right, well, let's go ahead and do that. Bippity bop. And all right, so we're starting to build up. Perfect. This is the last one we need. Nice. And uh, he's now going to do the non-renewable energy, which says, remove all energy from the era with the most. Oh, I really need to read these before they hit. So we just lost both of the energy that I needed to do stuff. Ugh. If there was only one here, then we would have gotten to pick which single one to do. Ouch, that was painful. Okay, so that was uh, well done, doctor. And now I am up. And if I end my turn here, we will have surrounded him again, so we're that much closer. But if I clear this out and end my turn here, then we can actually complete this objective and get that much closer as well. Plus, whenever you complete an objective, uh, you draw a number of cards plus one, and everybody gets to add one to their deck. So it's a big reward. So, um, plus, if I end here, not only will we, if I, after I've gotten rid of this, not only will we do this, but I'll get one of these re research. So I'd like to surround him because Jen just set herself up, so I could surround him. And that would be good too. We need to work on this. I think I'm more inclined to want to end my turn here, get a research, complete an objective, and uh, etc. Right. But what am I going to do? Well, that depends. I've got three cards. My new elixir lets me draw two, keep one, discard, destroy, or put back on top of the draw pile the other. So that just gives me a lot more flexibility. Digital Watch puts an energy on the next era, which means I'd want to do that on a place where it's damaging his plans. And the Brawler's Glove, push another uh, guy back. And let's uh, see, I do not have matching. But let's go on ahead and do Elixir first. Draw two. Keep one. So, boom. I, I think I'm going to keep this because when I loop, I can do both of these. And so my other one, my Quantum Rich, I can put back on top of the deck. I can destroy it if I'm trying to thin my deck out so I can get to cool stuff quick. Or put it back on my draw pile. Uh, move one. Yeah, let's go ahead and just put that back. All right, so this is now my hand, which means I'm going to want to loop and do both of these a second time. Um, you know, adding more energy, pushing stuff around. But here's the problem. I've got energy and pushing, and but no movement. I'm going to get to do one move for free, and then I'm going to have to eat energy to move the rest. This one wasn't going to give me energy anyway. So with that in mind, what is the plan? Assuming I want to end here and get a big payday. Okay, 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 okay. So, I mean, the big problem is, all my energy's gone that I was going to be able to use to get out of here. 
So I can't move at all. I mean, there's nothing... Oh, I could push. I, before I leave, I could push and take out that one or that one and just get them out of the way. Because before, I didn't care. But they're coming up. So let's just go on ahead and push one. Uh, you push. Boom! Off you go. No biggie. Back in the sack, Jack. Be gone. Okay, and that's it for this one because I'm not going to be doing anything more because I'm going to try and redo both of these. So, uh, now, I've got a free move. Oops. Let's go on ahead and use it. And jump over here. Right. And now... I could see. I could remove one of these. Now remember, I'm gonna uh, try and loop both of these so I can do. I can, and I want to get this one over here. I need to get all the way over there and remove one. Jeez, Louise, how am I gonna get over there? Um, well, I could consume this. Well, first of all, I could put one. Yeah, let's go on ahead and use the digital watch and put one over here. So I've got more movement. And because I did that, we're getting closer to getting rid of hyper productivity. That was a nasty card. And now. Let's go on ahead and eat this to keep on moving because I've used my one free move. And then I can eat this to keep on moving. And now I have reached my goal. Although, wait, no, 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 it's not. I have to get over here, get this, and then come back and end my turn here. So if I eat this to get over here, then there's no energy for me to actually... Uh, shoot, shoot the boot. By the way, I should have, uh, probably I should have done this when I was over here, just to clear one of these out, because that was a little scary. That would have been smart as I was going. All right, so, so I'm where I want to be. And if I get over there to do this, mm, you know what? Okay. If I eat this. All right, so, okay. Well, if, if I loop now to get this back, then I could put one here, but then I don't have the energy to get there. So I don't think I can do it, actually. So, I'm still happy to end my turn here because um, I'll be able to get one of these things. And it means I'll be in position to surround him on Jen's turn. So that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That means Jen will clear this out, move over here so that we get a surround, and then on my turn, if I end my turn here, I'll, I mean, maybe I won't move at all next turn. Depends on what cards I have, etc., etc. So I think I'm done. Am I going to consume this to loop? I think I will. I'm going to consume this to loop, and I'll get both of these back. And now I'm going to use them again to get rid of this, which uh, doesn't help us on progress on that. But more importantly, put in energy in the next one for Jen. And because I put one there, I am starting to destroy the mini blackout. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So there we go. I am Dunsville. Which means we are not surrounding him, unfortunately. We are not completing this objective. Even though I'm in position, we still had to get this done. And um, But I do get the Strawberry Donut, the Research Dog, or the 56K Modem. And these are both black holes. This is a spiral. And spirals were a weakness for me, so I don't think I'll take that. I will take... I mean, who doesn't want a Research Dog? Come on. How awesome is that? Draw three cards, discard two of them. So you have a lot more flexibility, a lot more control over what's coming. So in my turn there. Haven't completed any objectives still. These all go to my discard pile. And then, hello, Pooch. And Wrench. And uh, Bag of Tricks. So hey, that's going to be a nice looping turn as well. So I am Dunsville. Uh, Dr. Fu is up. And Adam, and he says, hey, put this in the industrial era, and it's got to go all the way over here to the robots. It says, bring another artifact out. It's the uh, Matricoca. Oh, oh, it's it's a little nesting doll thing, which goes into the era of industrialization for picking up later, and moves on instead of randomly moving around, and says, oh, this is going to be bad. One, two, three, four. Oh, yikes. That was... We could have almost had our first Vortex if a fourth one had shown up here. So, this is bad. But Jen... yeah, And that's great. Jen is going to end her turn over here. She'll clear some of these out, so we're keeping under control. Fine, fine, fine. Oh, and let's not forget the Blackout. Remove one energy from each era with two or more. Well, that's not a problem, because I have been gobbling up energy like crazy moving around because I didn't have any movement cards. Okay. Uh, did I want that research dog? This strawberry donut. Pull as many adjacent um, clones uh, as you want into your ear. So you could just go to a place and suck them all to you. That's actually really cool. You know what? I think the, that was better than the research dog. Because from where I am, I can pull this one, destroy him, pull this one so he's closer to there. Although I wouldn't pull these because they'd be pulling in the wrong direction. Okay, now I'll stick with the dog. 
Oh, man. Lots of options, though. And Jen is up knowing she has to end her turn here so they can surround Dr. Fu. She can get the Time NATO, um, but she has to clear one of these out so that I can patch up space time on my turn. And uh, what is she going to do it with? With these three cards. And hey, she's got that torch again. Let's go on ahead and do it right off the bat so we can plan around it because it's a little unpredictable what it will light up. So draw a card. It's the t connectors. Add an energy to that era. All right, so uh, it's the robot era. So, an e oh, that's nice. An energy gets added to the robot era, which means we've gotten another step towards destroying that. And remember, when you destroy these, that puts more energy on the board as well. So there we go. And then the connectors. Add one energy onto your era and then move one era. Ooh. Which means if Jen does this right now and puts a third energy here and then moves, we'll worry about that in a second, we just destroyed the mini blackout. Boom! Out of the game. And that means another energy appears someplace. Which, oh my gosh, four energy. Wow. And you can imagine, which one was it? Yeah, we have to destroy this. Because we have such a huge cache of energy now, this has to be destroyed. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And Jen, but Jen is going to be able to do a loop. And get both of these cards back. So that's pretty cool. And so what is she going to do now? Oh, don't forget. She had a move. So where is she going to move? She'll move over here because we got to clear these out. And I just realized, oh my gosh. Jen has no ability to clear rifts. Wow. We are in super danger, folks. Oh my gosh. Wow. Which means we are all but sure to bust a vortex and lose this time NATO. Wow. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Lousy. Wow, 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 wow. Um. Ye yeesh. Okay. Well, okay. Let's go on ahead and hoverboard and at least push this away. So he's starting to get over where he needs to go. Plus, that means he won't activate. So we'll only be dropping two. And maybe we'll get lucky and they'll spread out and not fall here in the center since we're only dropping two. So we're going to do that. Um. Oh, this is interesting. Add an energy to Fu's era. That's where he is. Let's go on ahead and do that. And put another energy over here, which doesn't really matter. Five energy piled up there. Yikes. Now let's go on ahead and consume this to get both of these back. And, um, oh, wait, 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 the hoverboard. After I pushed, I got to go wherever I wanted to go. Where did I want to go? I think I wanted to go over to patch up space time. Right. So... I had done that. Then, oh, but, oh, 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 oh. But then that meant I wasn't here to consume this energy to untap them. I had to go someplace where there was energy for me to be picked up. Because I want to use these again. Drat. So I want to do, I want to come over here. And, um, actually, that's not where I want to go. I want to go someplace where I could push again. Oh, no, I want to go over here so that I could put energy so I could get closer to destroying that. But drat, wherever I go, there needs to be energy. So so I guess I should come back here because this is where most of our energy is. So I went back there. Right. And then I consumed one of these and got these back. And now here we go again. And let's go on ahead and push. Got rid of one. So that's cool. And then we got this again. Add one onto my era. And then move one era. So I'm back here again. Although that is optional. That is optional. I don't have to do that. Because if I stay here, I can consume two energy and do both of these again. So that's interesting. So let's see if I stay there and then consume two energy for a second loop. Oh, the second loop could be this. But no, that's, I do a second loop. Now I can push somebody uh, and then move wherever I want. And then add one to my era. And then move one era. So... Yeah, so if I say, um, right, so they're, they're tapped. I say if I move over here and then push one and push this, and I've taken that guy out, nice. And now I've got this, add one to my era, which means I've done damage on this one now. That's also good. And then move one era. I'll just move over here arbitrarily. And now I can't loop again because there's not three energy, but I still haven't used my ability to move for free wherever I want. And then I'll end here. 
Okay. That was a very exciting turn. Lots of stuff happened. I might have got myself a little mixed up. Always watch the Cleon subtitles turned on, folks. But now at the end of the turn, hey, we have surrounded Dr. Fu a second time. We are one step closer to completion of that. Um, and at no point did I actually clear this out so we can complete this. Oh my gosh, that's painful. But we did at least do that. I did pick up the Time NATO, which goes into my draw pile. And um, so these all get discarded. And then here comes the Time NATO. And the super underwear. And the wheel is zapper. And no objectives complete. Nothing else. Dr. Fu says hi. He's made it one full loop around. Which means at the end of my turn, because we're on turn 7, he's going to draw three more new things and put them out in the world. And he is going to upgrade himself so he's bringing out two clones every turn. But for now, it's still just one. And it is um, right over here in the Renaissance. Oh, that one's got a long ways to go. That's a tough one to kill. And, uh, all right, so that's that. And what else happens? Oh, a new artifact comes out. It's the last compilation on Earth uh, during the Age of Apocalypse. That's, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, somebody's uh, CD compilation, uh, you know, in, in the, at the end times. So that happened. And he is going to uh, drop only two, and we could get lucky. If one of them falls here, then the last compilation on Earth is going to get destroyed immediately. So here we go. Crossed fingers. Boom. All right, so this is on the edge, and we just hit our fourth. And what that means is kablooey. Gone. Gone. We will not have the opportunity to clog up Dr. Fu's machine. We've lost that ability. We've lost the last constellation on Earth. And now, depending on the difficulty level you're playing, you can have a regular vortex or a Mega Vortex. I'm playing on medium difficulty, so there's a Mega Vortex. What this means is, if anybody ends their turn in this zone, we all lose. So, this is a death trap. You can come in here, you can do stuff, but you've got to get out. Unless, of course, you're Vortex Girl. Vortex Girl can survive in a Mega Vortex, but nobody else can. So, Jen has got to get out of here before her next turn. And that's going to make it tougher to surround Doctor. Uh, you know, and also, remember, if... Um, if we ever get another four cubes in this area, we instantly lose because that happened. Drat. Okay. Say la vie. That's the way it goes sometime. So, and then next turn, when he starts over again, he's going to draw three more of these and get more powerful. But, hopefully, before that happens, we can, um, we can work it out. Because I need to get over here, clear one of these in my turn here, so that I can get another card and complete our first objective. So, I've got... Um, and none of my cards are movement cards. You can tell at a glance. I mean, you can read the full descriptions, but there's a little... This is saying, this is about getting rips. This is about putting energy down. This is about getting cards. I need some movement cards. So, let's go on ahead and do the research dog first. Uh, draw three. One. And I gotta reshuffle my deck. I need some movement. Save us, dog. Two. Three. Oh my gosh! No! Um, although, actually, I, I don't have any. I'm not much of a mover. A shaker. I need to be getting cards that give me more movement. Oh dear. Oh dear. All right. So, all right. So I get to keep one of these. So my research dog converted into energy on an era. Uh, get rid of a what's it. I've already got that. Or remove a thing, and then remove one from the Vortex. Oh, that's nice, because it just so happens we have a Vortex. So, I think I'll take the Wormhole. Alrighty, and what did it say? Discard the other two. So the other two went into my discard pile. Alright, fine, fine, fine. Alright, oh, and this is unused yet. Okay, so, there we go. That was my first move. Now, where am I? Um, right, so, I will move for free. Oh, this is painful. Come over here. I'll remove one from where I am. And there we go. We've done it. We can now complete this objective, finally. And um, also remove one from a vortex. Great. All right, so that's good. So wormhole is done. That was a good thing. And by the way, if I loop, I got a triple. But none of these let me move. Oh my gosh. In fact, I mean, and I don't have any way to get back here. I'm stuck here now. I don't have... Oh my goodness gracious. Is that true? None of the cards in my deck? Is the one card I got rid of my only extra movement card? Because remember, I had to have one destroyed. That might have been a terrible mistake. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh dear. Alright, so, I think I'm done. Wait, no, of course not, of course not. 
because I can always consume energy to move. Durr, I got myself a little confuzzled there, folks. Okay, it's fine. And I'm here where there's all the energy in the universe. Fine, fine, fine. So let's go on ahead and use the quantum wrench to remove one from the next two eras. It'll be from over here. That's fine. Cool. Let's go on ahead and use my bag of tricks. Add one onto a previous era, which is over here, which means, boom, we're one step closer to eliminating non-renewable energy. And now, let's go on ahead and consume this and get it all back and do it all again. And then, um, and then use an energy to go back and end my turn there and complete the objective. So, let's go on ahead and use the bag of tricks and put another one over here. And in doing that, destroying the non-renewable energy. Nice. Which means more energy appears over there. The, okay, that's pretty cool. And, um, right, so I've done that again. Re re quantum wrench again. Remove one from over here. We're keeping things nice and clean. And Gutenberg's wormhole. Remove one from where I am and one from the vortex. That's not. And now let's eat an energy. Come back over here. Fine, fine, fine. And um, done. At the end of my turn, we have not surrounded Dr. Fu, but I do get one of these on my era push. Yeah, I got myself really confused. Uh, movement cards. There are movement cards, but for the most part, you move with energy. I was thinking of another game. Sorry, folks. It's been going for over an hour. I'm starting to lose it. I'm getting a bit loopy. But do I want the modem? No, I'll take the strawberry donut because, again, I do, I'm just trying not to do any deck building for spirals because I only had one to begin with. So I left that there. And because I ended my turn on the place with completed, I have we have patched up space-time. This is our first of four that we have to complete. And as a reward, we draw three and everybody gets one. Tesla's teleporter, genie of the lamp, and a steam locomotive. All right. Um, let's see. Do I like stars? I really like these flats. These keep working out really well. Those all go in my discard pile, by the way. Steam locomotive, remove one, and then move wherever you want. Okay, so like I said, there are moving cards. I want this. I want this, my precious. I want to be able to move around without having to gobble up all our energy. Kind of like my teammate over there. Speaking of which, we have our moves back. Teammate, he was taking spirals, wasn't he? Does he want Genie? Draw one, push an enemy on the, on the era of the card you drew. So you get an extra card, and this is basically just a free push. And then you draw a card and use whatever it says. Or swap one that's in your era with one from another. So this could actually, if the timing is right, you could swap two enemies and take them both out. I think that sounds like fun. Let's go on and take that. Bye-bye, genie of the lamp. And, uh, yeah, that was it. Phew, that was a pretty good turn. But now the bad news, at the end of my turn, he has made it back to where he started, the end of everything, which means this moves over, he's upgrading. Now he's putting out two clones per turn, and he's going to reveal three more evil plans. Uh, broad, uh, broadband pigeons in the era of modern times. Blast furnaces. So we've got two terrible things that are going to happen when he gets to the age of industry. That's not scary at all. And a uh, karmic renaissance when he gets over here. So he's got some more plans up his sleeve. And uh, that was that. And we move on to the next round. He's going to move over here. He's now bringing out two. So a clone appears in Robot Town. A clone appears in Globalization. A new artifact, still only one artifact, appears. The Holy Grail in Medieval Times. And what else? What else? Oh, oh, right. He drops. One, two, three, because there's a clone here. And boom, boom, boom. And uh, Jen is up. Oh, oops. By the way, I should have uh, redrawn Grief got my hand. So there we go. And Jen is up. We've um, Jen would like to end her turn here or here so that on my turn, I could do the last surround. There, I mean, this is really bad. We can't let two things happen. So Jen's got to get over here and drop some energy to at least get rid of one of them. This is the one that forced us all to trash cards forever. So Jen's got some options. What is she going to do? I'm not sure, folks, but I think I'm going to stop right there because that should give you a pretty good idea of the basic flow of the loop. And if you want to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that eye in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.